access to these stories, you can learn from your own destiny by seeing us along the way. Join us as we explore the new series covering topics such as passion, friendship, and hard work. Your host, Jim Riley, and I hope you enjoy these interviews as much as I do. I believe that everyone has an important message. Hello and welcome to the Answers Yes podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Today I've got Maria Brito. She's an award-winning art advisor, author, and curator. Maria also hosts her own TV series for PBS and has written for publications such as Elle Magazine, Huffington Post, and one of my favorite, Entrepreneur. They had featured an article about me several years ago. So Maria, welcome to the show. Hey, Jim. Thank you. And hello, everyone who's listening. Thank you for being here with us, too. I love, uh, you know, looking through your Instagram page, and of course, it talks about what you do, uh, but you've got some really eclectic and great photos there that you've curated yourself on how you present yourself, and uh, I realize that you're an entrepreneur at heart and uh, in what you do, and I'd love to hear some of your background. Maybe you can tell our listeners about uh, a little bit of your history and where you came from. Yes. Well, I grew up in Venezuela and South America, and I moved to the States to go to Harvard Law School. And I graduated in year 2000, moved to New York City to practice corporate law at big law firms. And I hated it with all my might. And um, nine years after practicing corporate law, I decided I couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I quit that very stable job that was extraordinarily well paid and safe to open my own art advisory. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I didn't know that could be a job. (laughs) I understand that. It's um, what I do basically is I help people to collect art and to build art collections that uh, act both as aesthetic and incredible points of conversation about different topics ranging from race to society to technology, whatever it is that my clients are passionate about. And they also gain financial value over time because, you know, the art market is pretty solid, but it's also pretty complicated to navigate if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's one of like the main pillars of my business is that. And I also, with time, um, I also had created for myself within my business, a consulting company that helps individuals and uh, companies go through changes in um, creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship. And so because I have been, you know, I was able to do this and pivot from something as radically different as being a corporate attorney into what I'm doing right now. A lot of my clients were very puzzled by such thing and asked me to come do workshops for the employees and they love them and kept client calling me back and so uh, that part of the business the consulting part of creativity and innovation is quite interesting at the time because everybody has had to go through so many transitions in the past two years and uh, you know I think that being also able to work with so many artists has taught me a point of view that is quite different and that is always helpful when somebody wants to do something new usually you have to be able to absorb and admit into your life things that are not the ones that you go as business as usual right I mean new things innovations breakthroughs don't come from being an expert in one area but they come from looking at the world from all these different perspectives so Mm -hmm. that's in a nutshell what I do right Okay, so I want to unpack a little bit here. You you grew up in a foreign country. You came to the United States with the with the dream of going to Harvard, uh, which is you know very challenging to get in. And uh, here you are uh, receiving a degree from that college and going into law. You know um, what was it that inspired you first and foremost to come to the United States, go to Harvard, and get that law degree? Was it your parents' influence or something you felt you wanted to do? Well, it was originally my parents because I wanted to be a performer and a singer and my parents thought that was like insane and there was no way that I was going to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they they said, well, I mean, you know, you can do that as a hobby, but as a profession, you're going to be an attorney, a doctor, an engineer, an architect, something serious, according to them. And after you hear that for so long and you 
don't necessarily, I mean, like your parents mean well, but they prepare you for the world that they know, not the world that you are going to inhabit. So I was like, okay, look, I love to read. I love to write. It's fine. I can, you know, figure it out. I can go to law school because honestly, I was not going to go to medical school and I didn't really like, I still to this day, I have no idea about numbers, right? So mm -hmm. I was like, <laughs> I really have to do something that, I mean, I do, I do know about numbers in business, but I am like not like a math person with algebra and things like that. Right. So I said to myself, well, this, this could be an interesting path and I could end up working at a company, you know, which was like a more interesting thing to me than, you know, a John Grisham movie, which was also phenomenal, but I knew that was not going to be my path. So I, I did what my parents thought it was going to provide success, safety, uh, you know, a platform for my life to be just there, right? I mean, little did they know that it, it was going to make me miserable. It was sucking the life out of me because it was simply not what I wanted to do. And I mean, I'm not unique. I love that, you know, a lot of attorneys are like recovering lawyers and things like that. That doesn't mean being an attorney is a bad thing. What it means is that it wasn't right for me. And I am so happy that I was able to acknowledge that and that I didn't let my life slip through my fingers for the rest of my life, right? right. I mean, it's been 13 years since I left, 13 years since I left. And honestly, the past 13 years have been the happiest, the most fulfilling, the most incredibly rewarding, and also the most lucrative because it is my business and I wanted it to be successful and I wanted it to be an industry leader and it became that. So if I can do it, you can too. The answer is yes for everybody that I bet on myself and it's probably the hardest thing I've had to do in my life in terms of career, but I did it anyway. I, I just love this story so much. And I love your honesty because I find so many people that I run into that are doing exactly what you did is they're following the dreams and passion of their parents or their influencers and not necessarily their own dreams. And uh, they wind up in an education and it, it could be anything. It could be the military an education or in a trade that wasn't meant for them but because of the persuasion, they're there and they leave, you know, they get into that career and they're so miserable and you're so honest about it. And I appreciate the, the fact that you went to, you know, one of the notably top <laughs> law schools in the world and, and, you know, realize, hey, this isn't for me. I need to step away. And um, not easy to do. I mean, I've hired a lot of attorneys in my career, both for myself and clients. And I could say not one of them was from Harvard um, because it's such a, a small, eclectic group of people that graduate and get into the business. So I just I want to commend you for that and commend you. you for your your bravery to step away. Can you talk a little bit about that final decision process? Here you are, an attorney, um, successful realizing, okay, I'm miserable. What steps did you go through to make that transition? You know, I basically took a lot of in, like the inventory of my life and the things that I wanted to do and the things that were feasible for me, because obviously I could not go back and to become an, like a singer or a performer. You know, I was like too old for that, right? At 32 and um, or 33. And I just make you know i made a lot of notes of the things like physically physical notes and mental notes of the things that i was passionate about and the arts as contemporary arts visual arts that was a an area that i i had been engaged as a collector as a young collector and going to galleries and going to art fairs and i found the whole thing fascinating and this was pre-instagram and pre you know like the boom of communications and social media where we find everything is online it was at a time where i thought that was a market and a world that was very obscure and i thought if i can get in not only to work with clients but also to demystify this through social media and blogs and posts and to invite people to understand this world from a layman's perspective without having to surround it with you know sacred sanctity or you know kind of like uh, the snobbery or whatever i think i'm going to find something interesting there and that was since day one was part of the mission and it continues to be is to connect with people at a higher level that it's not just 
like my clients, but at, at a level that is a, a community of people who I am willing to educate with all the time that it takes to create good content and to write for all these magazines that I have written for and all those websites because I think that to me, that was a crucial part of the business. And one of the reasons why I got so many opportunities, including the TV show and all those things is because I was willing to explain easily what the art world is and how people can collect or what artists mean when they do certain things. And to do it in a non-intimidating way was part of you know, how I decided that I could do this for, you know, a living and for mm-hmm. and, and obviously I don't live out of you know the Instagram post but I live out of the knowledge that I have gained and I was learning something for myself well at the same time I was explaining it to people so the decision making process was that by elimination of a lot of things that I had considered where I could really not see myself doing that and by paying attention to the blind spots in the market and the blind spots of people who were doing the job that I wanted to do, I realized that I could do it better, you know? And obviously it's a different thing when you see it from the outside and it's a very different thing when you do it from the inside, but I was convinced that I had something to contribute and I was right. Yeah. So just some of the logistics of that transition too, and I I love that you found something that you were passionate about and you found the blind spots as you suggested that you could do better because I, you know, I see that as a strategist in in a consulting world, I see that every day. (laughs) It's hard not to ignore the blind spots. Like, well, I wish I could do that. I had more time for that. Um, But just some of the logistics of making that, some of that transition. Did you uh, write a business plan while you were still an attorney? Did you save a bunch of money to say, okay, I've got my umbrella if I need it. Um, Did you, you know, move apartments or, you know, change a lifestyle? What were some of the logistics? Because I believe there's a lot of people out there that are hesitant to make that jump just because of their own logistics and how they go about it. Well, I was, I was already, I was married and, uh, you know, my husband and I were both working and I did not really have a lot of time to spend the money because being an attorney is like a 24 (laughs) seven job. Right. So I had a lot of money that was in my bank account and I had a 401k too. And I had a lot of things that basically had provided for a cushion. Right. Mm -hmm. And so also the capital investment was not really incredibly high because what I needed was a website, a woman in communications and somebody who was helping me like, you know, by the hour at the very beginning, it was not like I didn't say, okay, I'm going to get into manufacturing. That is like, uh, you know, it's it's a money sucker. For example, that's one of those industries where you're like, you have to put so much up front to see something happening. Right. So I did write a business plan and it was very simple. And that's why, you know, I keep adjusting and pivoting the business because as you know, business plans have only a a limited amount of gas that you can get, you know, like you only can get so much out of business plans. And I always tell entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, do not get crazy about like, you know, the 60 page business plan because it's not going to happen. I mean, you're going to waste your time, got crazy about every minutia and detail. And it's really, unfortunately, in this day and age, the business plan just, you know, it gives you some direction. And for the most part, that business plan for me worked, you know, to give me direction and, and to kind of shape what the business was going to be. But obviously it kept changing, shifting and mutating. And as you go on, you know, you know that certain things are intuitively within you as an entrepreneur that you have to follow and certain things you have to kill because they don't work anymore. And it's just like, whether you have them on the business plan or not, you just, you know, make the decision of what's best for your business. But yes, I had savings. I I knew I didn't need a lot of capital or resources. What I need was me mm-hmm. to show up and to be willing to do everything, right? Like to shake hands of everybody, to put myself out there, to be passionate and to be super clear about what is it that I was doing so people could understand it and hire me, right? I mean, it's like that a famous elevator pitch is really one of the most important things if you can really articulate it well. And if it you can say it for certain years and it doesn't work anymore at some point, then you have to keep, or even months, right? Like, I mean, you have to keep shifting and, and, and pivoting it. But it was that huge transition was possible because I had something to fall back on. However, I went into this thing saying I have no plan B because I don't want to go back to corporate America. 